Hello, in this video we are going to derive an expression for hydrostatic pressure. So what you see in this figure is a container with water. So hydrostatic, hydro is water and static means it's not moving. So what I have done here is I have just uh, included a small object that is not moving in this water tank. And let's say it has a very small depth of delta Z. If delta Z is extremely so small, you can even think of this as a plate just floating in the tank. And let's say we have co the cross-sectional area that you see here in red hatch. Let's call that as delta A. So delta A is our cross-sectional area. Delta Z is the depth. And now let's think of the pressure and forces that are acting on this object. Let's say there is a pressure of P that is acting on top of this object. And then there is a pressure of P plus delta P that is acting at the bottom of this object. So we know that the pressure decreases as we go down. So that's why the pressure is higher on the lower side of this object. And then we also have a force due to the weight of this object. So let's call that as W, okay? And when this is in equilibrium, so at equilibrium, Since the object is not moving, we have all the forces and pressures uh, balanced. So the forces due to weight, or we can think of the weight as the force. The force due to weight is equal to the force due to the pressure gradient from P and P plus delta P. So I'll just say pressure, okay, here. So let's, write an expression for these two and then we'll see what do we get at the end. So for weight, we have mass times acceleration or g. So g is the gravitational acceleration. So weight is mass times gravitational acceleration that we know already. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace this mass by expression that involves density. So density is mass over volume. So then for mass, it will be density times delta V times G. So let's say delta V here is the volume of the object, okay? And then we can simplify the ex expression even further. So for delta V, we will write delta A times delta Z times G. So that's our force due to weight of the object. Now let's think of the forces that, that are acting on this object due to P and P plus delta P. So force due to P will be P times delta A. Okay, so this is acting on top of this object. And then we have force due to P plus delta P. So that will be P plus delta P times again delta A. So pressure times cross-sectional area will be the force. And this is acting in the upward direction. So if you want to write the net force due to these pressures, on top and bottom, we have P delta A minus P plus delta P delta A. If we simplify that expression, we end up with, so this P del times delta A and P times delta A gets canceled. So we have minus negative delta P times delta A. So now we have this and we have this. So all you have to do now is equate them because everything is in equilibrium. So we have 
rho times delta A times delta Z times G. So that will be the force due to weight. And then we have minus negative P times delta A. So this will be the force due to pressure gradient. So we have delta A, delta A going away and rho times so then on the left hand side we have rho times g times delta z is equal to minus delta p and we know that rho times g is gamma which is specific weight so let me just write down rho is the density of fluid and then we have gamma equals to rho times g which will be the specific weight Of fluid okay so once we do that what we get is Delta P is equal to my mi minus gamma Delta Z so I just brought the negative sign over here or we get Delta P over Delta Z is equal to minus gamma and this is, you can think of this as a discrete form. So if you want to get a continuous form, so again, if limit of delta Z goes to zero, delta P over delta Z will become DP over DZ. So we can write the final expression as DP over DZ is equal to minus gamma. So that's the expression that we have for the pressure gradient, which means the pressure is changing with Z and that is given by negative gamma. So negative sign here just means that as Z goes up in that container, the pressure decreases. So as we go up from bottom to top, the pressure de decreases and that pressure gradient is given by negative gamma and gamma in this case is the specific weight of the fluid. So this is the expression that we have for hydrostatic pressure distribution. So this is in continuous form then you may ask how do we actually use this so let's see how we can use that so i'm just going to write application of hydrostatic pressure distribution okay so let me just again draw that simple diagram with a container. So that's our liquid surface or water surface. And let's say we have two points, point one, and then we have another point, point two. And let's say the pressure at point one is P1 and the pressure at point two is P2. Let's say two is at an elevation of Z2 and point one is at the elevation of Z1 from some datum. So let's use this as our datum. And then let's say, Z1 minus Z2 is H. So H is the height between 1 and 2. Okay, so we have this expression dp over dz is equal to minus gamma. So what we are going to do is we are just going to integrate this between point 1 and 2. So to do that, what I will do is dp minus gamma which is constant so dz so let's say this goes from p1 to p2 this goes from z1 to z2 and then we can solve this okay so this will be p2 minus p1 
is equal to minus gamma z2 minus z1 now remember z1 minus z2 is h so z2 minus z1 will be so minus gamma minus h and that becomes gamma h so p2 minus p1 is equal to gamma h so if we know the pressure at p1 we can find the pressure at p2 as p1 plus gamma h so this is how we can use the hydrostatic pressure distribution to find pressure at any given point if we know the pressure at the reference point so in this case we are assuming that we know what the pressure is at p1 and then we can find pressure at p2 then you may wonder how do we get pressure at p1 so we can use the same concept so in this case we will use our top surface as our reference which will be p0 so the pressure at p1 will be p0 plus gamma let's say this is h2 so this will be gamma h2 and since this is at the top of the water surface the pressure is atmospheric so you can think of this as zero so p0 is atmospheric pressure so we will be using the gauge pressure so in that case the atmospheric pressure is zero so p1 is equal to gamma h2 and once you know what p1 is you can find p2 by using this expression so i hope you learn how to derive the hydrostatic pressure distribution expression and how to use it to get pressure at different points so thank you and if you have any questions feel free to email me